This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hello and welcome back to another amazing episode of the Stephen Jarvis and Friends podcast. Before we get into today's episode, I would like to thank, or I would like to say, please go check out the Deluxe Edition Network.com where you will find the podcast of the month for the month of June, which are Barrel Aged Chicks and the Deep Dark Secrets podcast. Also, I would like to give a quick shout out to the Broken System podcast as their work with um dj's family they have finally got a little bit of justice for that family um dj's killer is now arrested and waiting for trial hopefully they get hit him with the book um but we'll see what happens also go check out the talking shit show go check out every other podcast that's on the network they're all great, including the podcast of the year, which is Bev's Video Kingdom. So today we're going to talk about the history of the Minnesota Vikings in the 80s. And that means we're going to talk about the Metrodome coming into play. We're going to talk about the Vikings miracle seasons in 82 and 87. And we're going to talk about Jerry Burns and Bud Grant and... Of course, Les Steckel, because, you know, we we got to we just we got to do it. I'm sorry. I know people don't want to hear it. I know the fans don't want to hear it, but we got to talk about it. Also, I will be doing a live stream tomorrow instead of Saturday, because Saturday and Sunday, me and my wife, we will not be home. So tomorrow night, I will be going in depth on the 1987 Minnesota Vikings team. So. Check us out tomorrow. That'll be about 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, which would be 6 p.m. Mountain Time and 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Pacific Time, I think that's two hours behind us, so that'd probably be about, what, 5 o'clock p.m.? Something like that. So let's get into the episode. The 80s. The 80s are kind of an up and down type of uh, there. It's an up and down decade for the Minnesota Vikings Uh, up because they're still kind of competitive down because they, they, they don't make it to the Super Bowl anymore. I mean, the Minnesota Vikings haven't been to a Super Bowl since 1976, 77, when Super Bowl XI happened, when they lost their fourth ever Super Bowl to the Oakland Raiders, 32-14. to um, Fran Tarkington later retires in the late 70s. Jim Marshall retires. Um, but Minnesota has a new quarterback, and his name is Tommy Kramer. They draft him. Fran Tarkington later supposedly said that he wasn't going to... Uh, nurture or help with the development of Tommy Kramer. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, And later on in the year, we would also have an underdog quarterback by the name of Whiskey Wade Wilson. But we'll get into that. So let's start. In the 1980 season, the Minnesota Vikings won the NFC Central again with a 9-7 and record clinching the division title against the Cleveland Browns in the miracle at the Met, but would then lose the divisional round in Philadelphia 31-16. On May 15, 1981, the Vikings moved into a new facility in suburban Eden Prairie that houses the team's offices, locker room, and practice fields. The complex, the cop, co- uh, the complex was named 
Winter Park after Max Winter, one of the Vikings founders who served as the team's president from 1965 to 1987. The Vikings played their first home game at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome in a preseason matchup against Seattle on August 21st, 1982. Minnesota prevailed 7-3. The first touchdown in the new facility was scored by tight end Joe Sensor on an 11-yard pass from Tommy Kramer. The first regular season game in the Metrodome was in the 1982 opener on September 12th when the Vikings defeated the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 17 to 10 running back Ricky Young scored the first regular season touchdown in the facility on a three yard run in the second quarter A players strike shortened the 1982 regular season to nine games at the Vikings qualifying for the postseason with a five and four record. In the first round of the 16-team playoffs, the Vikings defeated the visiting Atlanta Falcons 30-24, but then lost at the Washington Redskins 21-7 in the second round. The Vikings and St. Louis Cardinals played the first American football game in London's Wembley Stadium in a preseason game on August 6, 1983. The game was the the game was dubbed the Global Cup. The Vikings won 28-10. This was three years before the NFL started the American Bowl series. On January 27, 1984, legendary head coach Bud Grant retired as head coach of the Vikings. Over the past 17 seasons, Grant had led Minnesota to 12 playoff appearances, 11 division titles, and four Super Bowls. His regular season record during those 17 years were 151 wins, 87 losses, and five ties for a career percentage of 632. Grant was replaced by Les Steckel, an offensive assistant with the Vikings for the past five seasons on January 29, 1984. Steckel, who had come to the Vikings in 1979 after working as an assistant with the 49ers, was the youngest head coach in the NFL at age 38. The Vikings lost a franchise worst 13 games, and the defense allowed a total of 484 points, also a franchise worst. In Steckel's only season as head coach, after the season, Steckel was fired, and on December 18, 1984, Grant was rehired as the head coach of the Vikings. On January 6, 1986, following the 85 season, Grant re-retired this time for good. At the time of his retirement, he was the sixth winningest coach in NFL history with 168 career wins, including the playoffs. In 18 seasons, he led the Vikings to a 158-96-5 and regular season record. Longtime Vikings assistant coach Jerry Burns was named the fourth head coach in team history on January 7, 1986. He served as the Vikings offensive coordinator from 68 to 85 when the team won 11 division titles and played in four Super Bowls. In his first season, the Vikings, led by the NFL Comeback Player of the Year, Tommy Kramer, went 9-7, and their first winning record in four years. In his second season, he led the Vikings to the NFC Championship game. Following the strike short in 1987 season, the 8 and 7 Vikings who had finished 8 and 4 in regular games but 0 and 3 using replacement players pulled two upsets in the playoffs by beating the two teams with the best record regular season records. They beat the 12 and 3 New Orleans Saints 14 to 10 or 44 to 10 at the Louisiana Superdome in the wildcard playoff game. The following week in the divisional playoffs, they beat the 13 and 2 San Francisco 49ers 36-24 at Candlestick Park. During that game, Anthony Carter set the all-time record for most receiving yards in a playoff game with 227 yards. The Vikings played the Washington Redskins in the NFC Championship game on January 17, 1988 at RFK Stadium. Trailing 17-10, the Vikings drove to the Redskins' six-yard line with a little over a minute left in the fourth in the game but failed to get the ball in the end zone. Running back Darren Nelson dropped a pass from Whiskey Wade Wilson at the goal line to officially end the Vikings' hopes of a Super Bowl. Nelson was later traded to the Dallas Cowboys and possibly the worst trade in NFL history, the Herschel Walker deal. The Vikings and Chicago Bears played a preseason game at Ulevi Stadium in Gothenburg, Sweden on August 14, 1988. The Vikings won 28-21. The Vikings board of directors added four new members in 1988. Wheelock, Whitney Jr., Jay Dyer, Dyer, 
Erwin L. Jacobs, and Carl Poland. They joined Max winner John Scogland, Jack Steele, Sheldon Kaplan, and Mike Lynn. Whitney became the new team president, replacing Winter. Winter left the board in 1989 and was replaced by Gerald Schwalbach. On October 12, 1989, the Vikings acquired running back Herschel Walker from Dallas. The final result of the trade gave the Vikings Walker, third-round pick Mike Jones, fifth-round pick Reggie Thornton, and tenth-round pick Pat Newman in 1990, and third-round pick Jake Reed in 91. Meanwhile, Dallas received Isaac Colt, David Howard, Darren Nelson, Jesse Solomon, Alex Stewart, a first, second, and sixth round selection in 1990, a first and second round selection in 91, and first, second, and third round selections in 92. Two of those pick selections turned into Emmett Smith and Darren Woodson. Walker's performance fell short of expectations in his three seasons with the Vikings, while the Cowboys rode their draft picks to three Super Bowl victories in the 1990s. Roger Hedrick became team president on January 1st, 1991. He, along with Philip Moss, joined the board of directors, replacing Jack Steele and Sheldon Kaplan. On December 3rd, 1991, Jerry Burns announced his retirement effective at the end of the 91 season. In six seasons as head coach of the Vikings, Burns compiled a career record of 52 and wins and 43 losses. He also led Minnesota to three playoff appearances, including a division title and an NFC championship game, which if you really think about it, it kind of sucked, you know, from the Vikings during the grand era in the sixties and seventies, where they're going to the Super Bowl. They're at least trying. I mean, not many not many teams in the 70s from the NFC were going to the Super Bowl. I mean, you had is either a toss up between Dallas or Minnesota. The AFC, you had Pittsburgh, Miami. Um, who else? Pittsburgh, Miami, Oakland, Denver. But I mean, really. I think the team of the 80s would have to go to the 49ers. Um, the Giants only went to one. Washington went to three. So maybe Washington and 49ers were the team of the 80s. Um, Washington only won two of those Super Bowls in the 80s. Um, but they had to get through Minnesota. I mean, Minnesota in 82 had a good team. It's just, you can't stop John Riggins. And John Riggins, the diesel, who was the fullback for the Washington Redskins, which are, as we all know, are the Washington Commanders. Hopefully that name goes away soon. Um, They just, if you could, literally with John Riggins, if you could run the ball and get a few touchdowns, all you'd have to do then, if you're up 14 to nothing and you got John Riggins, who's a bulldozing type runner, you can easily effectively just take any defense out of that game. And in 87, I mean, that is the ideal year of not only a miracle season, But we should have never beat San Francisco that year in the playoffs. We we pulled it out against New Orleans. And all the football experts were saying, oh, the Minnesota Vikings, they're not going to be able to beat San Francisco. San Francisco is going to win this one. And then they're probably going to win the game against against uh good lord sorry about that my wife was trying to call um can't remember what i was trying to say now they were pretty much the nfl experts were saying minnesota did not have a chance it was pretty much one of those games where we shouldn't have shown up 
if we showed up, we are going to get our butt kicked. Well, we kind of turned that. Hold on one second, everyone. It's one of those games that we turned it around and... And pretty much threw it back at the expert, so-called experts in the NFL. And we really just kicked their ass that year. I mean, that one game, if that ain't a statement game of Minnesota being um, a team that probably should have been to a Super Bowl that year, I don't know what is. I mean, yeah, people can say, well, you know, you guys beat the 49ers, but you lost to the Washington Redskins in the NFC Championship game the next week. Um, shit happens. It really does. And, you know, you can't really blame the Vikings for that. I mean, you can blame a player for that, which was Darren Nelson. Um, all he needed to do was just catch the freaking ball. That's it. We either get a first down or a touchdown. And if we got the first down, well, then you line up and you get the touchdown afterwards. And for whatever reason, we just couldn't get it done. Um, and I think what really had hurt those 80s Vikings is they never sniffed out the Super Bowl. Jerry Burns, and I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but Jerry Burns is a hell of a head coach. He was what the Vikings needed after Bud had left. I honestly, in my heart, do not think Les Steckel should have ever gotten the job because his one of his big deals was as soon as they announced he was going to be head coach, Les Steckel wanted to get rid of Jerry Burns he pretty much wanted to bring in a bunch of unknowns in that position. And you can't do that. And when that happened, Les Stecco wanted to run the team like it was a military operation. These are just football players. You know, and for them to be like, oh, hey, you know, let's just uh, run a military style offense or training camp you're going to literally hurt your players and tire them out before the season even begins. And that's pretty much what happened. They were flat as hell. And the 1984 season was an embarrassment. I mean, 3-13 and 13 from a team that in the 60s and 70s and at, to that point were dominating, were... You had the Purple People Ears, you had Fran Tarkenton, you had Joe Cap, you had Chuck Foreman, and then in the one year that Les Steckel is head coach, shits on all that. And yeah, the 80s were a different era, you know, you were having more offensive-minded head coaches and all that. What do you consider Les Steckel then? Because he wasn't a great head coach. He wasn't even a good head coach. And there's people that out there that say, oh, well, you know, they should have gave him another year or two to see if he could do some. The damage was already done. I mean, he was telling people that if, you know, they didn't do what he said, he'd cut them. And you can't run a team like that. So then when they brought Bud Grant back, you know, Bud Grant leads them to a 7-9 and season in 1985 to bring him back to respectability, and then he leaves again. And then they finally make up for a mistake that they did with the Les Steckel hire, and they hire Jerry Burns, which Burns should have gotten the head coaching job after Grant retired the first time. Um, and the 80s Vikings, I have to wonder if it wasn't just... They looked at themselves and said, you know, we're never going to be what the 70s and 60s versions were. And I think they got too much into that. And you didn't have a head coach or anyone that could say, hey, you know, you guys are your own team. What happened in the 60s and 70s happened then. 
that's the past. You're the future. And for whatever reason, they just, they couldn't get it done. Um, and it's sad because you had players like Chris Dolman, um, Whiskey Wade Wilson, Two Minute Tommy Kramer, Anthony Carter, um, Joe Sensor, you know, and it kind of sucks, but you have to put um, Darren Nelson in there. But we'll talk more about the 87 season tomorrow. I'll go more in depth during the live stream because it's really a great season for Minnesota. Um, also that year you had the Minnesota twins worst to first 87 world series champions. Um, here in Minnesota, they thought both teams were going to win world championships and who's to say they couldn't have. I mean, you had the twins do it. Minnesota should have been able to do it because, and and I'm not going to downgrade the Washington Redskins 87 team. But we should have beaten them. We should have. Um, but as they say, you know, shit happens and you can only do as well as you can. And sorry for keep droning on and on. I got to make it go a little bit longer so then I can put in some uh, trailers for our podcasts of the month, which are the Barrel Age Chicks and deep dark secrets podcast which go check out both them podcasts they are very very well done every podcast on the deluxe edition network is well done um and if you haven't seen it yet go and check out the denny's that was done on sunday where it was you know all the awards were handed out and all that stuff and we had our first ever podcast of the year winner which was Bev's Video Kingdom. They did a really good video to hype that up. And I just, I hope we keep uh, doing uh, great things. But um, I think I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, hopefully, freaking phone keeps going off. Hopefully, we don't get interrupted tomorrow. Um, hope not. But, um, I just hope you all enjoyed this episode. Go check out the deluxe edition network.com, where again, you'll find the podcast of the month, which are Barrel Age Chicks and Deep Dark Secrets podcast. And also go check out the talking shit show with Mark and Brian, go check out the broken system podcast, go check out quad pro quo, go check out the Steve crypto show. I think it's called, um, spoil my movie deluxe edition podcast, deep dark secrets, um, hill for history. I'd like to fuck barrel age flicks and many more. There's so many more that I, I I could go crazy announcing them, but go check them out. They're all great. And also, if you enjoyed the content, please give me a like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification icon so you'll never miss another episode of the Stephen Jarvis and Friends podcast. I will see you all tomorrow, and that's it. This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com.